It's a decision that impacts thousands of people. It's hard. We find out how the school district decides whether to call a snow day. Plus, it's a break from tradition at Geyser Middle School. Thanks for really good. The respect these newcomers are earning on the mat. And you'll be surprised to find out what material these high school students are using to make dresses. It doesn't look like much, but cold weather and icy streets in November force Vancouver Public Schools to start two hours late. And we could see more snow days throughout the winter. Hello and welcome to In the Know. I'm Helen Raptus. The decision whether to close schools down for inclement weather affects thousands of people. So we wanted to know, how does that decision get made? Well, Nick Vole has the answer. For parents and students, finding out if school has been canceled starts when they turn on the morning news. But for administrators in the Transportation Department of Vancouver Public Schools, it starts hours before most of us even wake up. Do you hope it snows sometimes? Me? No, I don't like that. <laughs> George Bryant is in charge of Vancouver Public Schools Transportation Department, and when snow or ice is in the forecast, he starts his day early. At about 2.30 in the morning, um, I get up and I get the computer out and I go check the NOAA website and see what's going on in terms of, look at the radar, check all the temperatures in the region, and kind of just get a feel for what's happening at that time. If conditions are still rough at 3 a.m., George starts making phone calls, waking up his team and talking to the weather service. At 3.30, drivers hit the roads, testing for slick streets or snowdrifts. But that's not all they're looking for. One of the things that we, we make sure we check when we're driving is we always take a look at sidewalks and see how, how, what the condition of sidewalks are because, of course, that's where the kids are going to be standing. And so not only does it have to be safe for the buses to drive on the road, we try to make sure it's safe for the, for the students to be at the, at the bus stop. The district is also in contact with street crews. We can find out which roads they're getting done first, the order they get them done, and, and how things are with them as well because they're out there too. As drivers report in, George is back at his command center marking the situation map. Green stickers mean things are okay. Red stickers mean they're potentially dangerous. As we look at this situation map where we have this all posted, we can kind of get a picture of, of what we should do. Too much red and the decision practically makes itself. Safety always overrides, and, and we, if, if we don't think it's safe, we'll call school. It's a lot of responsibility to be behind the wheel of that bus with all those kids. <laughs> At 445, George gives his recommendation to the superintendent, who makes the final decision. If the buses can operate, we're going to have school, and if they can't operate, we're not. If school is canceled, George's hectic day is over, just as the rest of us are hitting snooze. After we make the decision, I go to McDonald's and get a sausage biscuit and a cup of coffee. For In the Know, <laughs> I'm Nick Bull. Ah, that's it. Administrators have five options when there is snow or ice. School is scheduled, snow routes, a one-hour delay, a two-hour delay, or as a last resort, school is canceled. A senior at Skyview High School is one of five students around the country to win a national honor. Clint Saylor was selected to the All-American Video Crew, and in January, he'll work as a camera operator at the U.S. Army All-American Bowl game in San Antonio, Texas. That five-day trip is the prize in a contest sponsored by the All-American Games and New Tech, a video equipment company. Clint got the good news from his video production teacher, Nancy Wistrand. Honestly, it surprised me. <laughs> like, I wasn't expecting it, but I don't know, it feels pretty good. It's pretty cool. Clint's contest winning entry is a montage of shots he took of Skyview's nationally recognized marching band. It's part of a longer documentary project he's working on. Clint hopes to attend Brigham Young University next year and says he will at least minor in film. We're going to show Clint's film in its entirety in just a few minutes after the show ends. We also have it on our YouTube site, youtube.com backslash vansdtv. While you're on our YouTube page, you can check out a whole bunch of other Vancouver Public Schools programming. That includes whole episodes of In the Know, as well as individual stories, Columbia River News, and other programs. YouTube is also part of our focus on technology. The popular video sharing website is perhaps best known for cute kittens or caught on tape moments, but it's also a wealth of valuable information. Now Vancouver teachers can start using YouTube in the classroom. 
As kids become more and more reliant on television and other visual media for information, teachers can now incorporate appropriate videos into their lessons. The district believes that visual presentations can help different kinds of learners get a better grasp on the subject matter. It also puts more information at teachers' fingertips. Just like Google uh, provides access to a wide variety of, of print and, and uh, uh, text sources, YouTube is kind of the, the video equivalent of that and allows them a wealth of resources that they can then choose to use as they see fit. YouTube is only available to teachers, not students. And to make sure that videos are appropriate for children, teachers must watch them all the way through and enter their personal access code before pressing play. Earlier this year, we told you about Shannon Long, who's defying stereotypes as a rare female football coach at Geyser Middle School. Well, she's not the only one at Geyser who's changing perceptions about what women can do. Chad Young has the story. On the surface, the Geyser Grizzly Middle School wrestling team looks just about like any other middle school wrestling team. You really don't notice any difference when the Geyser wrestling team is warming up. You only notice it when the hoodies come off. For thousands of years, men have wrestled. But this season, seven young women joined the team, the most ever at Geyser. It's a trend Coach Tom Seibout says started with one trailblazing female wrestler nearly five years ago. Uh, it all started with Anna Stoffer, who is now a senior at Skyview High School. She took second in state last year. Movement, movement! Coach Seibout says the girls are aggressive and don't back away from anybody on the mat. It would be cliche to say that just competing is a victory for the girls in the Geyser wrestling team, but as you can see, they're not just after respect, they're after wins. And wrestlers like Natasha are finding success. It's just her first year of wrestling, but she's undefeated as a junior varsity wrestler. Initially, her parents were leery of their daughter's desire to join the wrestling team. Well, they didn't want me to do it in the beginning, but they're proud of me for doing a sport they have never done before. So. Natasha's mother says being on the wrestling team has been a positive force in all aspects of her daughter's life. Yeah, definitely it's helped her self-confidence and it's helped her schoolwork because she has to have certain grades to be on wrestling. So I, uh, I think it's good all around. Teammate Holden is in the same weight class as Natasha and competes against her daily in practice. Holden says that when he's on the mat, it's not about gender, but about competition and giving it your all. Everyone says like, oh, you're going to be a jerk if you win or you're going to be like a loser if you lose. But I think it, wrestling girls is just the same as wrestling guys. They're in there to compete and you should give them your best just like you'd give anyone else. Natasha Williams is looking to the future. I'm going to wrestle in high school pretty much. So I, everyone's been telling me I have a career. So For In The Know, I'm Chad Young. And here's more exciting sports news. The Fort Sports Crew at Fort Vancouver High School is now broadcasting boys and girls basketball games live on Comcast Channel 29. This is the first time these games have gone out live on the air. There's at least one game a week through the end of the season. You can find the schedule on our website, vansd.org, on the video page. It's a fun day for students and parents at Lakeshore Elementary as they get to learn together in the classroom. I don't get a lot of days off, so it's nice to take a day off and spend some time with my son. Mark Frazier joined his son Mark Jr. in Ms. Fector's class. Several other parents also came. Together, they shared their holiday traditions and learned how celebrations vary from family to family. Uh, my tradition is on Christmas Day. Me, um, we help my mom make gumbo, which is a type of soup with crab in it. And the tradition that I learned today from another kid in my class is that they do uh, this one party and they celebrate that by a different culture. After drawing a picture of their holiday tradition, the students made a short presentation to the group. Mark Sr. tells us that Ms. Fector encourages parental involvement and likes to bring moms and dads into the classroom from time to time. Paying for school lunches just got a lot easier for parents. No more sending money to school with the kids. Bills can now be paid online. The new feature allows parents to pay with their Visa or MasterCard. There is a convenience fee, but parents who use it are finding it helpful. Yeah, the online payments make it very easy and convenient for the parents because then they don't have to come in here or they don't have to write a check. They can just get on the computer at home and put money in their kids' lunch account. The online payment system also allows parents to monitor how much money is left in their child's lunch account. Contact your school or go to the district website to learn more. Yeah. Superintendent Steve Webb got an up-close look at how the cafeteria at Washington Elementary School does its job every day. 
He worked an entire lunch shift, from prepping food in the kitchen to serving hamburgers to students and working the register. He found out the lunch rush is busy and there is no time to relax. I hope uh, I was able to provide a little bit of uh, support. Uh, I hope I didn't get in the way too much. I know that uh, you know the register thing, that was probably my weakest link. Um, but uh, I, I really am impressed with the uh, quality of the production and the operation here. Dr. Webb tries out different positions within the school district a couple times a year, pushing back his regular superintendent duties into his own personal time. Cafeteria staff told us that they appreciate that he tries to understand the challenges they face at work. To show what it takes to feed an army of hungry kids, we're working on a reality show of Dr. Webb's experience called On the Job with Steve. To watch, check back on Comcast Channel 28 and our YouTube page in January. Creativity abounds at Skyview High School. Students in fashion marketing classes are making dresses without fabric. At first glance, this seems like a row of girls in party dresses. But what's hard to tell is what those dresses are made out of. I came up with this idea to take toilet paper and teach the students how to sew. That's right. Instead of cotton or silk, many of those dresses are made out of toilet paper. Teacher Kathleen Hodgins is challenging her students, and they're responding. The kids have made it, you know, evolve. I, I think I got to step back, and I think they're taking over. Yeah, I love um, classes where I can do projects and show my creativity. Beginning students had to get creative. They were only allowed a single roll of toilet paper to make a whole dress. Sewing was pretty hard because the material was super thin, but it was overall not that as difficult as I would have thought it would be, but because we sprayed hairspray and stuff to make the toilet paper harder. And of course, the question we all have is, did they use single or double ply? Double ply. <laughs> Advanced students were allowed to use more materials, but there was a catch. Everything had to be recyclable. First, um, I did the skirt, and I used about 700 coffee filters. And then the top part, I used um, a garbage bag, a black trash bag. I just had to plan it all out, and then I kind of just did it, you know, piece by piece. And I was like, okay, and all, along the way, I decided to put on pockets. This project caught the attention of the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, a prestigious school in California. They sent a representative up to see these dresses. And they were just amazed to see this level in the high school. From a sketch to the final product, these students have come a long way in a short time. Before they couldn't even, um, you know, thread a needle. Now they're thinking beyond high school. Yeah, I really want to go to design school. Um, my goal is to be a fashion marketer, um, so that's what, that's what I kind of want to do with my life. <laughs> The holiday season is upon us, and students at Chinook Elementary get a special visitor. <laughs> That's the famous cinnamon bear, who can be seen on the Portland Spirit River Cruise at Christmas time. The students read the cinnamon bear's book and prepared some special gifts for the bear and all his friends. Of course, the cinnamon bear, captain, and princess returned the favor, handing out candy, stuffed bears, and lots of hugs. While we were at Chinook, we found another neat holiday celebration. These students, helped out by their parents, built gingerbread houses. Instead of gingerbread, however, they used graham crackers and ice cream cones. Holding it all together? Well, frosting, of course. And you can't have too much candy on the outside for decoration. Well, this is our last episode of In the Know in 2010, but we will be back in January. I'm Helen Raptus, and from everybody here at In the Know, have a great holiday season.